and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us in our webinar, Fitness for Service Assessment using Advanced Simulation. We'll have a Q&A session in the end. So if you come across any questions during the presentation, please ask them and our experts will be happy to answer. Uh, I'd like to get started uh, with a brief introduction of our presenters. We have today Dr. Arundam Chakraborty, our CTO. He's a mechanical engineer with more than 14 years of a strong academic and consulting experience in solid mechanics and design, nonlinear analysis, fatigue and structure mechanics, reliability analysis, composite structures. He is also experienced in automating complex engineering problems using Python scripts, and he is involved with ASME and API code committee activities and is a certified FEA instructor. I also want to present Dr. Murthy Lakshamaraju, our CFD technical director. He has over 15 years of advanced use and experience in CFD to solve real life engineering problems for numerous industries, including energy, oil and gas, marine appliances and chemical processing. He has experience in different flow physics, including advanced turbulence modeling, multi-phase flow, heat transfer, fluid structure interaction, conjugate heat transfer and reacting flows with combustion and emission modeling. He is also closely involved with ASME code activities. And last but not least, we have Daniel Ochoa, our EMAC solutions consultant. He has nine years of experience working on topics related to RF and microwave systems, modeling and simulating different types of electromagnetic problems. He has worked in areas like antenna, antenna array, broadband matching, network design, filter design, bioelectromagnetics, EMI, EMC, EDA electronics, and low frequency electromagnetic problems. Now, we will get started with our presentation. Arindam, would you like to take over? Yeah, hi, uh, Kenya, thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, so uh, I will briefly talk about uh, in general, who we are, what is bias, and also uh, I will present the initially the fit, uh, fitness for service finite element related uh, slides, and then I will hand it over to uh, our technical director CFD Murthy uh, to discuss CFD, and then again I'll uh, I'll go over the concluding slides. So good morning or good evening, depending on where where you are in the globe. Uh, so thanks for your time in attending the webinar, going to the next slide. So overall, the agenda is uh, briefly about our company, and then I'll talk about why we do this fitness for service assessment. I mean, many of you are already aware and quite involved with this, uh, but those who are new, uh, so it will probably give you some general insight about it. And then I'll, uh, we try to keep this uh, presentation more like example based. So we wanted to show you like where it can be used through, through, uh, through cases uh, which are practical. And then uh, I also have some analysis automation example, which I'll go through and finally we'll open up for your question and answer. But uh, our interaction doesn't end at the webinar. If you have anything, uh, feel free to contact any one of us. In our title slide, we have the contact information, or you can drop an email through our website as well. Briefly on our company, uh, so we uh, we are a uh, we take pride in the fact that we are very multidisciplinary. Uh, so fitness for service is mostly uh, applicable to petrochemical refineries, oil and gas, and all those industries. But what we do have expertise in other uh, industry where we actually kind of we cross uh, utilize our expertise and, and experience in other industries to solve problem in, in a particular industry. Uh, and, and this also makes us uh, sort of like a unique in that uh, value addition. Uh, where there are solutions of similar technical problems from other industries that we can import in, in, in a different one. Uh, we, we started in USA, now we are present in Canada, Mexico, and India. So we are truly a global company and we are expanding into other areas as well. So wherever you are, uh, we, we can be reachable quickly at your time. And, and also uh, we can, I mean, right now we are not being able to travel that much, but we also do a lot of uh, uh, 
customized training and all for which we can reach out to your office and all when the times are come back to normal. Uh, our team consists of about 70 plus employees. Uh, we do have people who have uh, deep uh, academic experience uh, in PhDs and masters and also uh, on uh, business administration experience. Uh, we cover pretty much all the fundamental verticals that you can think of in engineering applications and all. Uh, we recently have added also a lot of chemistry based simul chemistry simulation based modeling and all. Uh, so we kind of cover all all the needs that you may have. We apart from engineering services, which is kind of the focus for for this presentation, we also provide product lifecycle management consultancy. I have a few slides just to uh, sew in that idea, and we can have a very detailed discussion about those uh, how we can support with your digital twin initiated product lifecycle management. And also, I have a few slides on uh, using artificial intelligence for uh, uh, basically, I would say, uh, to to make your simulations uh, very quick. Uh, so we'll talk about that. And uh, we we have a very strong relationship with the source system, which has all the products from CAD to simulation, uh, Ketia, Abacus, and all others. And that makes us also gives us a unique proposition, which is we have both the software expertise as well as the deep technical experience. Um, this is again overall our technical capabilities is general technical capabilities, and I won't go to too much of details into that. But we cover pretty much any anything related to multi physics problem, multi scale complex simulations and uh, I mean be, be the ge complexity from the geometry or material behavior and stuff like that or for fluid it will it will be like how how the uh, flow is mixing and all this is it a multi-phase so we, we cover pretty much all aspects uh, particularly in terms of fitness for service and design by analysis applications and this is I want to also emphasize here uh, we are calling this webinar fitness for service because that's the focus of the nature of the problem but if you have a design by analysis requirement either it's a replacement or a new design uh, pretty much all the fundamentals are the same and we do have a lot of expertise in that area a lot of involvement so consider this as both fitness for service and design by example capabilities so uh, two kind of scenario you will face one is there is a crack like flaw and non crack like flaw so we have we have the relevant expertise uh, to handle both of those uh, kind of damage or degradation scenario we also do uh, like final element based track modeling which is pretty advanced and, and computationally expensive although uh, but we are also getting into more damage modeling analysis and using artificial intelligence in in uh, having a more computationally efficient approach for that uh, material testing we we do help our customers we have vendors that we work with uh, contractors and vendors and we help our customer defining the test program and all and also i mean basically taking the test data and applying to the simulation so uh, if you have an interest in that area, we can we can work with your vendor to help you out. Uh, more on the CFD capabilities uh, and uh, its uh, combustion, fluid structure interaction, mixing. Uh, if you if you are looking into the how your vibration and pulsation loads are generating, so currently we are working on a few projects where we are doing a CFD based approach uh, to find out the load on the structure. Uh, then general heat transfer and and also chemical reaction and all we can look into so more in the process side of things we we can and recently we have done for one company like a technical sort of like a tutorial on cfd why cfd is important how it is changing the way we do uh, do our analysis and all do our investigation so if you are interested in similar sort of it's it's a uh, it's like a free half a day uh, event that we do. So please drop us an email, we'll be more than happy. We'll do it for CFD, FEA, electromagnetics, any, any of those areas. So just let us know if you are interested. Uh, on the electromagnetics, it's it's more about, uh, without getting into the details of the slide, it's more about uh, application is more into the area where it, there is a flaw. We are using electromagnetics to detect the flaw. Uh, what what we have in our solution we use opera and uh, for for our electromagnetics application in the fitness for service industry 
is it can uniquely capture the stresses, electromagnetic aspects, and also the thermal uh, part of it. So this this gives us a, oh, it's like one, you have one entry point in the software, but you can handle all these different mechanisms that's going on. Uh, so if you have more uh, interest, I just have a few slides on electromagnetics, but uh, we can get into a conversation with our electromagnetic expert. Uh, just let us know, maybe after the webinar, we can follow up. This is an example where, uh, just trying to play the video, it looks nice. So this is an example where we do a lot of automation, uh, solution development, plugins and all it. it uh, for Abacus, we use Python scripting and Fox Toolkit to generate a graphical user interface and I have some examples later on. So what we are trying to do is we can, we if either you already have a workflow that you want to automate, so we can work with your workflow, automate it, and then give a very simple interface for input data collection, then it does everything inside internally on the, on the as a back, it can be used as a black box. Of course, you have, we will have access to inside the black box, but for most of the people who are using a general user, they can see it as a black box, give the input and take the relevant output and then a decision making process can come from there. Uh, so we, we will talk about it. So, and, and we can use a, like general coding languages or specific if we are using a particular software for this. And if the workflow is not developed already, then we also can work as a, in a consultative manner to develop the workflow with your team. Getting into the next slide. This is something I really want to emphasize. So we uh, we have a strong relationship with Dassault. So they, they have all the software solutions. So we do a lot of off the shelf uh, trainings, uh, which is more on the software and applications and all, but we also can do very customized training because what is what happens is companies may have their unique requirements or they are developing a team where they need them to work on a certain nature of problems. So that's where our customized training can come in. And this is an example of a DASO course. And we also add a lot of customized material on top of that course. So kind of blend it. We are very flexible about our training of, uh, offerings. Um, and uh, I hope you will find it interesting what we do. And let us know. So we will share our knowledge of the software, our understanding of the code and the industry, and also our experience. So it's, it's not just a dry training on uh, solving this problem this way. It's more about the insight uh, that we can share. Uh, getting into more FFS, what, what is fitness for service and why we use it? It's uh, this is from the code. So it's the ability to demonstrate the structural integrity of an in-service con component containing a flaw or a damage, I mean, any sort of damage. So it provides us a quantitative uh, uh, appreciation of the problem where we can it's all about risk and the dec making decisions about the risks right but what it is doing is is adding a physics based problem where we solve it through mathematics and give a quantitative nature on in our risk matrix so that is it that is uh, it is all about and then we are using all this uh, sophisticated softwares and analysis approaches and all. It's a very interdisciplinary approach and we do have in our team material science experts and welding experts and all. Uh, based on the need, we bring them in a project team and, and we can give you a one-stop shop solution. So, there are multiple levels when you do a fitness for service. We are more focusing. We we can do level one, level two analysis for you. In for this particular objective for the webinar, we are focusing on level three analysis. So it's you can see all these words complex is coming in, right? So it's more. It's nothing but more information. So you give more information. Uh, you have more confidence on the answers. That's why you can you can lower your margin of error so think of it in a very simplistic way this is all about having more information having a high fidelity solution so we you want to bring in fea and all which has a strong mathematical uh, basis for i mean there are actually error analysis and all in fea that says this problem has a mathematical bound on the error so if you pose it prop pose the model properly if you have enough information then you know my output is going to be close to what what the uh, what the actual structure may have there are certain implicit randomness which we can never capture 
but at least the model dependent data dependent and randomness can be reduced and that's why we will be more confident about our result so this is all uh, philosophically this is what the level three is so uh, we'll and we will talk about more on this uh, modeling aspect in this webinar so when we look at and i'm talking about this part is structural uh, so cfd you can think of it can be used more into driving the loads driving the boundary condition and also we can do some erosion analysis and all and then electromagnetism is finding the damage right quantifying the damage so structural is mostly the behavior of it right uh, so what we are doing there are plastic collapse local failure buckling and these are different checks that we do and and there is something called concept like a sharpening the pen, pencil so you you start with a simple analysis if it doesn't work then you go to the next level of complex analysis and all so elastic plastic material for example material behavior is like kind of close to the ideal behavior but you can start with this elastic analysis and if it passes it has conservatism built in if it passes you are fine if not then you get into another detailed approach which will be less uh, which your margin of error will be less because you are more accurate so you can use a lower factors of safety sort of right so uh, if uh, so you but you don't want to start i mean depends on the cases but it's not like always you have to start with elastic plastic and all so there are there is a gradation of the complexity of the analysis that you can employ so that was kind of kind of the message here and api 579 if you look at it there it's a damage based the structure of the code is based on what kind of damages we get and there are you can broadly classify them into crack like flaw and non crack like flaw so uh, now i'm going to talk about some fea simulation examples so first i'll uh, and we have uh, we have based it on like different kind of structures overall so this is more on the pipeline fitness for service um, let me see some of it maybe a video um, okay so this is more on de denting and these are these are kind of made up example from from the experience that we have so this is not like a real thing but we we kind of showed you visually what we are doing so we can look at the like indenter making a groove and we can model the indentation part get the plastic pl plasticity developed and then we can do the more detailed analysis on that another way is you can you can just introduce the geometrical damage and then do an analysis on the, on the existing load so this is again like uh, just a follow-up slide from the previous one so we look at the total plastic strain uh, equivalent so and then kind of make a determination about about the structural integrity uh, this is and again another example of a corded pipe with an outer dent it's it's just showing like you can so a b c d and all this thing think about it like it's the level of parametric details that you can put in in modeling the flaw so that that's all we are talking about in this uh, gouges and metal loss again now you can look at different interactions of damages and again you you, you through a through certain geometry parameters you can model it into very very detailed uh, information and also it doesn't have to be have to have an exact geometry if we know about arbitrary geometry we can also bring that in uh, there's an example of a pipeline lamination case where we model the lamination as something that will open the surface but of course it's not going to have a like crack tip singularity but there are also possibilities of crack at the edge of the lamination so we also look at depending again depends on the risk assessment from the inspection side and all we can also introduce a crack at the edge of sorry at the edge of the lamination and look into that this example we have chosen to show that it's it's not always like just because you have a resource to do a lot of complicated analysis you don't want to like just overuse that resource so this this is more like a local damage there is something happening locally but you need to capture this pipe is under thermal stresses and all so you want to capture the entire movement of the piping system so what you do is you co combine a 3d model with a 1d pipe element model and then get the get the um, you know, boundary conditions on this local area properly and then do a very detailed analysis for only that local portion and this philosophy is very like it can be applied for any problem uh this was more of a it's little it's not exactly like a 
fitness for survey. I mean, it's a combination. So there was one scenario where they're manufacturing, they had a concern with the manufacturing process, but they are seeing this problem in the field and they wanted to also, eventually they wanted to dig into the manufacturing process. So the way we show this example, the reason we show this example is we want to talk that it's not just fitness for service have problems. Sometimes it can be an investigation why we ended up having this issue. So we we like we look at the problem in a holistic approach. Um, now these are more example of flanges and drums, uh, and uh, here uh, we uh, we look at the gasket leakage and all sort of things. So it can be a nonlinear material as well. Sometimes for the gasket portion, and and we actually had a uh, load deformation curve for the gasket, which we are using it. So it's not just a using standard formulation, which can go beyond that. Um, this is more of a coke drum fitness for service assessment. This was we from laser scan data, we put it into a final women model and move move with uh, move move forward with doing a structural analysis of it. Uh, now all all this that you have seen, these are more like non crack like flaw. Now there can be a situation with where you have a indication that that looks like a crack or maybe a crack confirmed crack so if you, if you, there is an indication that that is crack like is better to also consider it a crack and check it so this is like how we can use simulation using a, a failure assessment diagram so these are for non standard although the crack we used to do it is like a standard crack but uh, if we can develop the failure assessment diagram for for your use, okay. So this is based on the code methodology and everything. So we just want to show that it's again, it's not just what the formulas are given or what the tools are overly on on the surface capable of, but we can go deeper and and extend our uh, the possibility of analysis that you may have. Uh, these are cracked under a dent and also as I was mentioning before so you can have a like at the a tip of the lamination at the edge of the lamination may have a crack same is with dent so we can bring in all this together in the final element model this is an example with with the flanges with some crack at the uh, cl close to the flange joint and we we looked at the flange forces and all this so we can bring in the entire uh, uh, entire aspect of the model close to a damage and then we can do all this fracture mechanics related analysis and and these are these are sometimes of course not very most of the time not very simple analysis to do but we also i mean that's another thing i have a uh, i have a plugin i'll show we also have automated some some of this uh, flaw analysis cases uh, Again, this is just a plain like giving more details about how we can introduce a crack in a pipeline. This this one is an actual crack. You can do actual or circumferential any of it. Again, this was a there was a uh, it's an example of a pit, and then maybe a possibility of a crack, and also we can look into that as introducing damage as a geometry. Uh, this is more about there was an indentation on a uh, ID of a pipe and there was a concern with uh, with the uh, stress intensity factor values and all this because of the temperature and operating pressure and all. So here what we have done is the message I want to send is this if you look at the crack shape is based on the indentation the plasticity zone because of indentation but we don't have a control on the plasticity zone. Uh, so it's an arbitrary shape crack. So it's not just like very regular geometry, any kind of arbitrary shape geometry, we can model the crack. So that that's the main thing here. And it also uses the residual stresses from indentation and also it's it's overall it is pretty complicated problem, which can be solved using the appropriate software. Uh, this is more on the creep damage. So we do have the uh, we have a subroutine for and subroutine that uh, I mean in advocacy you can develop the subroutine to introduce a damage model and also we have taken the api 579 the latest uh, creep subroutine from i mean creep modeling from there and created this subroutine using that we have done so uh, then again looking at the von Mises stress and all uh, here we have uh, that's one thing i want to point it out also like it goes the same way into not over utilizing what you have uh, so for for this particular case for the fracture mechanics we decided to do more like a spreadsheet based calculation because our loading scenario and crack and everything was very similar. Uh, I mean, very, uh, very well defined. So, uh, 
this was heat of tube integrity. We looked at the bulge because of creep phenomena and looked at what is, what is the damage, uh, what are the damage parameters and all. Uh, these examples where we are joining the CAD with CAE, and again, that uh, the SOA has a wonderful uh, cascade of solutions which you can you can create a very good workflow using that. So first we had a laser scan data. We used Katia. So you see the word 3D experience. It's a platform. It's a product lifecycle management and simulation platform. So we used the CAD solution Katia there. We we took the laser scan data and then we created a surface and and of course there are checks and balances to make sure the surface is having a high fidelity. You know. Then once we have that. We import it to Abacus and we do some of the fitness for service analysis. So this is another aspect. So uh, there are there are more and more initiative of using reduced order modeling. So this we have published recently in PVP last year. I mean things are right now not normal for anyone. So it was a online presentation and I didn't get the chance to interact with really anyone too too many people i mean i i have personally contacted but we were hoping for a live presentation and all this so uh, this is uh, this is a made up problem again what we are trying to show here is uh, just like a vessel section straight we used a cylinder and all nothing complicated uh, put a nozzle there but what it is trying what we are trying to show here is actually it should be 2020 sorry about that okay uh, so we we wanted to look at the uncertainty of this so there is a reliability aspect of this problem so why we chose that because once you are doing reliability then you have to do many many sampling of this so if you are keeping a like traditional fea it will take a lot of time so what we are trying to do is we get out of the traditional fea we use a use a reduced order modeling technique and then solve that problem with this so it reduces the, the time that we'll spend on analyzing individual samples. Um, yeah, so and you, we use the word, uh, software uh, Axelos, which came out of MIT, and then it helps us modeling those reduced order problems. Uh, these are some examples of anim analysis automation. Uh, this is actually uh, is freely available from the so um, I, I need to check it, it's part of a course but i think this particular plugin also is freely available so if you have interest let us know all it does is if you have an inspection data in a spreadsheet it reads from there puts the de puts the individual uh, individual thickness ma maps the individual thicknesses to the shell model where you can always change the thickness in the shell and then does all the fitness for service analysis so all this process is automated in this this is more about uh, those of who we are familiar of this formulation so it's basically calculating the material properties that that will go inside abacus then for the analysis uh, this is uh, this is available for free if you are interested let us know so there is a welding simulation uh, that can be done this has limitations and all these things so uh, we uh, you have to be aware of that and this may not be the most efficient way. This is a little bit older plugin, but there are newer plugins also available, which we can, which which there is a cost associated with it, but it's it's worth taking a look at that. So you can you can model your welding process. As you can see there, there is a 3D example we have created. We always do validation for this kind of problem, uh, but it, it you you can look at certain welding parameters and then you know you can optimize your welding process with that. Uh, again, it helps with running this welding simulation many, many times for complicated structures and all this. Uh, this is the fracture modeling that I was mentioning. So it it only uh, only addresses a certain kind of flaw in a certain kind of structure, but it can can be made more general. But I will just show an example how how a very complicated model can be put in a black box with a simple input. Uh, so that's all I have from the FEA and, and you know, like plug inside and reduced order modeling that I was mentioning. Uh, now I will, uh, I would like to invite Murthy, our CFD expert, uh, to talk about some of the CFD examples. Hi, Murthy. Okay, thanks, Arindam. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Murthy. I uh, will just go through some uh, CFD examples here. Uh, so the first one here we have is a flue gas thermal mixing header. 
Um, the main, uh, sorry, just give me a second. Yeah, it's a flow and thermal analysis of the flue gas mixing header. Um, the main uh, objective here is to reduce the hot spots in the pipe, uh, you know, which may cause uh, thermal stresses. So uh, the main idea is to use CFD uh, numerical analysis to uh, overcome this issue. So we went through a couple of uh, design iterations. Uh, where you know we have this flue gas uh, bypass line coming here and the co the cooler flow uh, you know coming from these two branches uh, the mixing is happening here um, as you can see there's only a very limited space available um, to for, for the mixing um, so we you know we went through a couple of design iterations and the final design iteration looks something like this um, you know so we uh, you know, move the, the bypass line and, uh, you know, it splits into two. So we, uh, so the idea here is uh, we kind of like, you know, both, both fluids, uh, um, you know, kind of uh, uh, collide each other here uh, for a better mixing. And then, you know, uh, the, the fluid gases, you know, leave the system here. So as you compare, uh, I mean, both uh, the, the scales are the same. So you can clearly see the you know it's um, um, you know it's uh, uh, the the hot spots are um, you know it's, it's not seen here yeah and also we looked at the the uh, the max the velocities the fluid velocities near the refractory um, because we want we have to uh, ensure there is no erosion occurring on the on the refractory. Uh, here's a uh, example of a cyclone separator uh, with a two-phase gas uh, solid cyclone separator and using uh, star CCM plus. Uh, solid particles are modeled as uh, Lagrangian, uh, Lagrangian um, and the CFD results are compared with, uh, uh, with experimental data. So here you can see the pressure drop across the system um, and then the, the tangential velocities at two different uh, elevations. Um, and this study is also performed at, uh, you know, different uh, uh, particle diameters. So the lighter the particles, you know, they, they rise up and if it's uh, heavier, you know, it settles down. Um, here is, um, so we can also model uh, fluidized beds. Um, Using a uh, discrete, uh, you know, element method. Um, um, so let me, sorry, play this animation here. So yeah. So uh, using uh, CFT, you know, we can uh, we can design these beds um, and also, you know, overcome any operational challenges due to the complexity of the process. Um, so let's. Uh, coming to the uh, pressurized thermal shock, this is where you know you inject a cold flow uh, into a, a vessel or something that uh, uh, is at, at a higher temperature. So because of the sudden interaction of the cold uh, cold flow into the system, you'll see uh, uh, you know thermal stresses developing. So we can, uh, you know, we can do this kind of like a FSI flu structure interaction where you take, you know, you model the uh, uh, the fluids, uh, map the temperature data to the, the structural model and see, uh, you know, how the stresses are. This is an example of a flow induced vibration. Uh, here, um, there's a uh, flow go going through it and then, you know, we can look at the, uh, you know the frequency of the transient phenomena, um, and if and see if it matches with the natural frequency of the system. Uh, so, uh, so this is like the you know the optimized design where you see uh, um, re a reduction in the the vibrations. So, uh, in this example, uh, you know the the significant uh, I mean the deformations were reduced by twenty two percent and the corresponding stresses by 37%. It is an example of uh, erosion modeling. Um, you know, we can do like a single phase, like uh, 
um, uh, sand particles or uh, some dust particles in uh, in gas phase, liquid phase, like a combination, like a multi-phase application where you have both gas and liquids uh, with with solid particles. We can we can model that. Uh, we can estimate what's the the key erosion areas and also estimate what's the erosion rate, um, like in mm per year. Uh, how like the material loss uh, measured uh, per per year. Uh, so uh, the the erosion calculations are uh, kind of um, it's more like a qualitative uh, methodology. So you know it's uh, because you know it, it depends on the the erosion model that we use. So it's better to uh, you know start with a, a validation. And uh, in addition to er uh, erosion, you know, we can also model corrosion. Uh, so here is an example uh, showing the corrosion modeling in a pipe bend, where uh, you know we have a carbon dioxide. So with this, uh, I conclude uh, CFD. Um, uh, so I'll give it back to Arindam. Here. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you know, please uh, post it in the Q and A uh, session. Uh, sorry, Q&A chat yeah. box. Yeah, thank you. So now we'll talk about the EMAG examples. So I I have the first one with the eddy current testing. And so this one, as you can see, we are, uh, again, it's a it's kind of a made up problem, um, but we wanted to show the features that, that we have there. Uh, sorry, my I cannot see back your screen. Okay, okay. So here, what we are trying to do is uh, we are using the eddy current testing model to detect the flaw. And as you can see uh, here, the when the it's perpendicular to the flaw or par parallel to the flaw, it has different signatures, and there will be there can be multiple probes. So using that, you can not only detect that there is a flaw. You can also detect the orientation and sizing of the flaw. And the question might be, so why why are we, because we have the instrument, right? So why are we doing all this simulation? So we wanna do the simulation for to, to look at the performance of your device and also how can you increase the sensitivity of it? So, so th this is where the application of the simulation will come in. Uh, going to the next slide here, uh, what we are talking about is uh, is for the pipe pipeline inspection gout, which is which is a peg, and we want to magnetize. So based on this peg, we want to use induced flux to magnetize the thickness of the pipeline, entire thickness of the pipeline. So that is that is kind of the functional goal of this peg, right? And then what we are doing simulation again for is. You can you can basically optimize your device. You can design your device so that you get you get your functional requirement properly achieved. And then based on the different pipe sizes and all this, so you can do all the, all the virtual testing. So these are very very good tool to perform your virtual testing if you are an inspection company or you know like even a facilities management where they wanna work with their vendors and you know, their own team to come up with proper inspection planning and inspection devices. Yeah, going to the, so those are those are two, uh, two very quick example on EMAC. There can be more details on that and we have our expert Daniel here. So if you have any question, please post it on the Q&A and we will get back to you and even after the presentation will be available. So this is, I just wanted to touch upon this. Every, everywhere you will see this word and, and it's, there, it's very, very real now. And many, many companies are moving and all. I cannot share individual company name, but we have success stories with companies uh, that have been going towards the digital twin and are using artificial intelligence in their day-to-day uh, -day operations. Uh, and I'm, I'm here, I'm mostly focusing on the simulation part of it. So moving to the next one. So uh, basically, uh, this is like a single model in a single environment. Uh, so you can you can make the model for you can capture the entire plant, but we are just making it simple to kind of give give the uh, give the understanding. Uh, sorry, there was a it was a, it was in Spanish. Also, we spelled this as simul simul actually simulation for English. 
So what we do is you have basic design, there are some validation part of it, and then you from, go from basic design with some planning and all to a detailed design, then if finally it's constructed and commissioned, and then you get into the life. So fitness for service is more about the operations and maintenance part of it, but it can all be through a seamless process. So it's almost like how, how we do for our own medical records, right? You wanna keep everything together throughout your life. So it also also helps with a lot of requirement management. It can be a corporate requirement, contractual, regulatory, construction, and of course operational, right? Uh, so all, all these facilities are available in 3D experience. We have a very, very capable team uh, to talk about this. I just wanted to introduce it. So we, we the team we have for this purpose of the webinar is mostly focused on the simulation part of it on the 3D experience. But we, it's a it's a huge product lifecycle management installation. So we have all the IT uh, team and all the PLM experts uh, in, our, in our company. So if you have any need, please let us know. Uh, going to the next one. Yeah, this is a cool video. So basically now you can see the entire plant is there, right? So you are kind of digitally walking through it, different assets and all this thing. Now there is a there's so, somebody has flagged something. So now we went uh, went to that point and then we are looking at the structure. So there is some corrosion detected in that structure. So uh, of course, I mean, this data has to be entered and all and, uh, and it can come from the sensors as well. So for uh, this particular example, somebody suppose has entered this data. So we go there, we have all the corrosion data. Now see, this is something you can relate like we were talking about this thickness mapping tool. So this is exactly what the usage of that. And you can now should be able to connect like how the simulation will come in within this uh, within this platform environment. So now we have the data. Now it, it's actually in the in the background. It's going to run all that plugin and all these tools there. So now we are going to run a simulation, and then uh, we we have we have we have actually captured the geometry. I mean the current geometry with the corrosion, and then we ran it and we. We loaded the structure virtually, and we are seeing what are the stress strains, deformation, and all. And then from that, a decision can be made. So this is this is really very exciting, and this is happening right now. This is a technology that you can implement. And you can you don't have to implement for your entire facilities. You can start with small areas, but this the approach is very very useful if you want to think about it and we will be more than happy to discuss in details about this uh, we can go to the next slide okay yeah they're just showing like different probing and all this thing uh, can you go to the next slide yeah so what is the value proposition of course you can have the modeling aspect so these are engineering right so it's an engineering and business platform so you have the modeling aspect, you have the simulation aspect, then you look at your operational data, and then it helps you with your maintenance. So traceability, predictability, real-time information, uh, source information, all these things uh, will be there. And it's like a single source of truth. So ev everything, is, uh, everything is there as if you are looking at your real assets throughout the life. So now this one, you will you will hear a lot of a uh, lot of talk about using artificial intelligence in everywhere, right? So here I'm I'm just focusing on a very very particular case where we are using artificial, and this is happening as I say, Wires is working uh, with companies on this, uh, and the example below is you can see one is like I will explain you it's actually a crash testing example. Where, where it's a very very complicated model we have applied this ai so here the ai is replacing the simulation not the initial part you of course have to do the initial simulation so it's bringing in physics solving it through a simulation then capturing the nature of the problem using ai and then then just instead of doing simulation uh, you are, we are using the ai tool to come up of all all, all these what if scenarios right you can run like thousands of cases you can vary your design like for this crash testing what we have done is we varied the different designs and it can automatically capture all these variations and you look at all your crash scenario scenarios now something that would have taken months actually for there there is a data for this for this particular cash crash problem it is a matter of minutes or seconds so you can reduce of course the training part you have to do 
but instead of running say thousand simulation you just need maybe 50 simulation or 30 simulation for the training part uh, another example is like a damage model and these are uh, we actually have a comparison of actual like using the existing process like run a cfd for fea for crash simulation and also we have used the training data from fea and then run it with ai and we have matched it it's almost inseparable like you cannot find any difference in that so so this is what we wanted to present if you if you have any uh, if you have any interest please please let us know uh, so this is this is an example of a phone drop test uh, many of you have seen i i do not have an example i can show right now in this webinar that directly relates to the fitness for service but i mean we we have done some work in that area it's all about like what problem you are solving is not very important we all all we need to do is have a high fidelity model solve a few examples use those examples to train your ai and then use the ai in lieu of your simulation so there is another one i think this, yeah so yes this one is more related to uh, additive manufacturing example so the previous ones that you can think of it as a more like a mo macro level more more at a like the model like the structure level simulation this is more uh, of a like we are just testing the uniaxial bars so from AIT manufacturing simulation one is experience and one is using the AI and if you can see the signature of the stresses and all is very similar here we are looking into more into the micro mechanical behavior so it also solves the multi scale x aspect of it and even if you have a, a multi physics domain problem it can also be solved I do not have an example in this webinar but but it can be solved as well same principle same mathematics step. i would say similar similar mathematics applied for that uh, going to the next one i think yes so this is just a brief of uh, why bias why we think you should work with us uh, we are a very client oriented company you will see prompt and complete technical solution from us uh, we we have both the industry knowledge multi-industry knowledge and software expertise um, we have been doing consulting work for a long time and we are also we have a very close relationship with the but we also look at what software is best for you if there is a better solution available we use a better solution so you have software agnostic to solve your problem uh, we do uh, understand your need to know what we are doing and how we are doing so we strongly believe in knowledge transfer so we when we do a project we share all the files we write very detailed report and, and any information you want we, we share we don't just say okay here is a two-page summary of what we did and if you are interested in learning and using us to help you learn so we can use our training services we can use a customized training and sometimes we do training as part of our project closure where we use the project example to train your team so that in future they can self handle those problem and maybe there are something they need our advice so we can in future play an advisory role rather than having a fully dedicated project team for the entire scope uh, we adhere to the iso 9001 2015 we have a quality assurance program and all in in the company uh, and of course we'll be flexible in the price and all this if you are a small company starting up few people we also provide startup discounts we can all discuss about that uh, and we consider ourselves a one-stop shop uh, so any uh, from simulation perspective but I think I should probably change the last uh, um, last bullet point so not just simulation now you can think of us as a traditional simulation uh, data analytics based simulation uh, product life cycle management digital twin everything so we we consider us a, a one single entity that can help you with all all the depth and breadth of your problem. I think that concludes our webinar uh, for the presentation part. Uh, I will hand it over to Kenya for the Q and A and the uh, conclusion of this. Thank you all for your time and thank you my team for all your work and your presentation. Thanks. Yes, thank you all for uh, the presentation. And uh, now we'll answer some questions from the attendees. So we have one for Iron Dan. It's how do you ensure that surface generated from point cloud data is a good match to the original data? Yeah, so there are, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Hello? 
Okay. So, uh, so yeah. So very good question. I think I just briefly mentioned. So without going too much into the details. So there are statistical uh, measures that we do. So we look at the look at the error band and all. Uh, so that is something we do in Katia. So it has a lot of those inbuilt tools available. And another one is also we we try to if there is a physical measurement done, we always prefer that. So we do some spot checks. And another thing is I think is kind of come from all this laser scan data is the experience. So you want to also make sure what is your form areas or what are your areas of interest and you look at very high fidelity in those areas. So we go and uh, and try to do like sensitivity analysis. So we take more points, less points and see how how the things are changing. And then we we look at the smoothness of the curve and all this. So there is a so based on mathematics mathematical uh, parameters based on uh, based on sensitivity study and based on our experience so we combine all these three to make sure that what we are using and of, of course some measurement data to make sure what we are using in the fea is the right representation of the actual structure yeah thank you okay great now we have a question for daniel which are, um, it's can we incorporate circuit element to control the excitation of the coils. Oh, okay, Daniel, your question. So the question was um, regarding about adding circuit elements. Yes. yes. In the system. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. In general, um, we can introduce circuit elements to represent the coil in the simulation. We also we also have a circuit editor in case you want to add any, uh, let's say, lumped elements, or if we want to and uh, include any switching behavior in the on the excitation signal or even we can change the excitation signal to to increase the the sensitivity of the assembly of the complete assembly okay so basically the idea is that you can couple uh the final element representation of the coil with the the circuit element there is a part that we, we i mean we, we don't have time to mention it but we also have the electronic component that comes after the prop. Okay, uh, that part we can also analyze and optimize to reduce, like say, signal noise ratio, and in, in, improve the sensitivity of of the entire assembly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So how important is the mesh sensitivity to these studies? Yes, I can check that. So any of this thing, I think. I mean, I I can speak more like as a finite element expert. So uh, eventually, you are you are using the mesh to represent your model, right? There's no real geometry information or anything. Everything is mesh. So it is very important. So what we do is it's more like part of our validation and all. So we do uh, perform mesh sensitivity study, but if it is a very complicated, complex problem, like you will kind of know that this mesh will be good but certain areas in the areas of interest we we try to run a simple problem uh, and we see how how the mesh uh, change in the mesh how we get that mesh convergence and all at least for the areas of interest so where we really really focus on having a converged mesh solution so to answer in a few words is extremely important and you should look at it as a combination of uh, your entire model and also specifically the areas of interest. Thank you. Thank you, Arindam. We have another question for Daniel. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel, considering the analysis of moving parts, what types of motions can be analyzed with the EMAC tool? Okay, um, well, in general, um, we can compute uh, electromagnetic fields, including uh, effects of eddy current, any type of induced um, magnetic or electric field in the three dimensions. Okay. Basically, we can we can include rotational motion, a linear motion, and a general motion, which includes uh, rotational and displacement. And, and I think this question is also related with uh, the previous one, with uh, related with the meshing, because since you have a movement, then normally we do a, a meshing analysis of. I mean, we. we kind of look at the quality of the mesh, but the software already has like a remeshing technique that is used for, for remeshing 
while the while the movement is happening, you can remesh uh, the analysis, and the, the idea is to have a quality and undistorted uh, mesh at the end. So you can reduce the like the numerical error arising from from that finite uh, mesh resolution. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, also, we have a, what erosion models do you use for general application? Yeah, that'll be more um, uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, for, for erosion modeling, I mean, it all depends on the um, the flow, uh, you know, the the particle shapes, the material, uh, you know, uh, the 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 wall materials. Um, so you know, we have to do some you know literature search uh, before uh, picking the uh, the the correct erosion model. Uh, in general, uh, for steel and sand particles, um, you know, uh, OCA or uh, DNV models. Uh. Thank you, Murthy. I actually have another question for you. Uh, when doing polymer analysis, do you model both fluids and compounds? Do do, how do you model them? Um, so, so for, uh, for for thermal analysis, um, you know, it all depends on the, the how the flow is. Uh, if it is the if the temperature profile is kind of uh, steady, like um, you know, like a pressure vessel where um, or some application where the the internal temperatures are constant, you can go directly to the solids. You know, assuming a constant temperature on the internals. If it is um, like a, a flow mixing or some temperature gradients across because of the chemical reactions or uh, you know because of mixing, then you know you have to model the CFD, um, the, the uh, you know uh, solve for the fluids, estimate the temp of the you know estimate the internal temperatures and then transfer it to the structural model. And that's besides STP be important in abacus. Oh, other, oh, oh, what like sort of for, format, geometry format and all? Yes. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, I mean, th there are multiple formats available. So there are neutral file format and all. Uh, typically, I mean, if it is a point cloud data, then we go do it through Katia. Uh, if not, then if there is a, like there are outputs from uh, CAD softwares and all. Uh, we also have SolidWorks that very integrally work with Abacus, so there are there are multitude of different ways STL and all this, so we can we can use them to import a geometry into Abacus. And and another thing is just to add on, if you have a if you want to use the results from one Abacus problem into a new, so we can always bring in the native mesh uh, with the with or without the distortion uh, as a new model in Abacus. So. So that will that will work as more like an orphan mesh. So you won't be able to change the geometry, but you get all the information from a previous problem. Thank you. Thank you, Arindam. Uh, our last question, it would be, thanks for the presentation. Can you tell me more about 3D experience? Yeah, so uh, I mean, I, I guess it's probably just another webinar in itself, but it is a platform tool. So you basically have everything integrated. It works with objects like your your more your uh, says here you have a structure, so that asset will be kept as an object. And uh, if uh, I'm just trying to give more like an example, so if somebody works on the design side of it, material side of it, then you know you have to do like some simulations. So somebody assigns a material property to anywhere in this ob object that represents your actual asset then the simulation uh, person will see that material gets updated in in the simulation so this is kind of how it works and it has it has certain workflows you can develop and also you can put your check requirements and everything um yeah please please contact us um and we will be more than happy to talk to you in details and provide you some more demos specifically for the 3d experience thank you okay thank you Arindya. Well, it seems like we don't have any more questions. So thank you all for your time, uh, for joining us today, and look for the replay in your email. Thank you, everyone. Um, and thank you, my vice team. Thanks. Okay. Have a great day.